Welcome to Hoboken High School's Class of 2017 Commencement Ceremony. Taylor from Maine, can you please join us on the podium to salute the to the class. Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing and could Miss Janae Cummings come up to the podium as she leads us in the Star Spangled Banner, accompanied with the Rock and Red Band. Johnson, Superintendent of Schools, Mr. Fitzhugh, Assistant Superintendent of Schools, Mr. Moffitt, Mr. Callagy, our Board of Education members, Mr. Kluffel, Ms. Angley, Mr. Biancamano, Ms. Delara, Ms. Evans, Mr. Madigan, Ms. Montgomery, Mr. McNamara, and Ms. Sobolov. All of these people have such a positive impact in our schools for which we are extremely thankful. Also, I would like to welcome from the city, Mr. Leo Pellegrini, Freeholder Romano, and Councilman Robbie Bala. As they say, it takes a village, and Hoboken High School is a village. Let me give a thanks to some of the people that are part of all of this. Mrs. Bello, my Vice Principal, our 12th grade power team, Ms. Wiener and Mr. Puccini, our Athletic Director, Mr. England, and the amazing faculty and staff. Thank you all so much. Last, but certainly not least, Ms. Ruskowski and Ms. Donnelly. Thank you so much. For the, for the time, energy, and enthusiasm that ensured all students had a memorable four years at Hoboken High School. This is a culmination of many years of hard work. 
I, as someone who has seen you grow over the past five years, feel extremely proud and humbled when I stand before you today. Proud of the people I see you have become and humbled that I have this trusted position that your parents allowed me to work with you each and every day. You have all wowed me at some point and more than once over the past few years. Your intelligence, your compassion, and your dedication are traits that make you stand out to me. I also feel extremely fortunate to work in such a small community. It allows, to me, it allows me to get to know you all as individuals and not necessarily as part of a class. To share with you the good, sometimes they're not so good, but nonetheless we were able to connect. I thought back, and the sad truth is, I do not remember who spoke at my own high school graduation. And definitely, definitely do not remember what they spoke about. I'm also a realist, and no unless I was a famous musician, actor, or politician, in years to come you might forget me and not remember me. So I will not make this long, but I will make it straight to the point, and I hope that something I say over the next couple of minutes will strike a chord and will remain with you in years to come. Number one, life is tough. You all must be tougher. I have seen great resilience in all of you, so please hold on to that. Number two, enjoy the journey. So many times we wish time away. I can't wait to graduation. I can't wait to get out. Rush until you get to the end and we miss out on the ride. During that ride, times opportunities will present themselves. Don't hesitate to choose a new path. That is usually when the universe is speaking to us. We need to listen. You might get resistance, but it is that resistance that will make you stronger and lead you to a place you did not expect to end up. Enjoy it. That is how we learn and grow. Number three, be kind. Kindness repays kindness. You get out of life what you put in. We don't have to like everything that comes our way, but it is how we deal with those challenges that truly define us, not the challenges themselves. If we approach people and circumstances with kindness, we usually come out less frustrated and with the ability to handle those challenges more efficiently. I've got my count, so I'm just going to continue. Laugh, and the whole world laughs with you. Laughter is the cure for all. Remember to keep your sense of humor. Throughout your life, you will always find that some of the toughest times will fade away when you can have a good laugh. And please be able to laugh at yourself. It will teach you humility. Share yourself and share your heart like you have done with me. You are beautiful inside and out. So please let other people see that about you. I'm going to try not. Laugh. 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 Right? Don't waste your time on jealousy. Sometimes you're ahead, sometimes you're behind. The race is long, and in the end, it's only with yourself. Life is not a sprint, it's a marathon. Be kind to your body. It has to last you a long time. Remember, your body is not a rental. You own it, so take care of yourself. Put down your cell phones and live your life in front of the screen and not behind it. Don't worry about the picture, the Instagram, the next great Snapchat. Don't let life pass you by. Seize, the mo seize those moments. I often mention the childhood book, Harold and the Purple Crayon. And I don't know if anyone remembers it, but it's about a young boy who has this crayon and he can draw his life out. And wherever he draws, he gets to visit. I want you to all take that purple crayon, draw your life out, erase things you don't like or you wish to do over, and draw a new path. Your dreams will carry you wherever you wish to go. And in the ending of this book, Harold draws a path back home. Please remember that whenever your crayon, wherever your crayon takes you, no matter how many paths you go down, take with you my few pieces of advice and know you can always come home. To my parents, guardians, grandparents, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, I've met you all, I think, over the course of the past five years. 
I want to thank you. Thank you for giving me an opportunity, opportunity to work with your children. I feel blessed because I have been given so much from all of them. Thank you, good luck, and remember to come by and visit us. Unfortunately, Mayor Zimmer was not unable to attend this evening, but asked me, but asked me to send her congratulations and best wishes to all graduates, faculty, and staff. I invite Mr. Leo Pellegrini, Director of Health and Human Services for the City of Hoboken, up to the podium with a special presentation. Nigel and Vincent, could you please join me at the podium? Good evening, good evening class of 2017. I'm Leo Pellegrini, Director of City of Hoboken. Mayor Zimmer couldn't be here tonight and asked me to come on our behalf to congrat congratulate you on, on this tremendous accomplishment. It is, honor to, is, it is an honor to be here to join you for this happy occasion. Thank you to Superintendent Johnson, to P Principal Pieta Petra, Yes, I said it right, I'm Italian, I can't mess that one up. To the teachers and staff, and to all friends and family who are here today for this important event. To the graduates, we are so proud of all of you and what you have accomplished. A lot of people deserve thanks for this day. Your teachers, school administrators, staff, school board, your family, friends, and everyone who else helped you learn, grow, and mature into young adults. But ultimately, you're here because of the time that you put in and the effort, and you deserve all of the credit. All of you make Hoboken so proud, and I know that we'll be hearing about your accomplishments in the future. As I walked here today, I, I had to reminisce because I sat in that chair 30 years ago, yes, as a red wing nation. So I am so proud of you and let's give a big round of applause to the two recipients who, who did a phenomenal job this school year. So again, don't forget that now, like myself, you join the Alumni Club. And, and what that means is that you don't forget about future Hobokenites, you always come out and give back to everyone that's done that for you, whether it's your coaches, your teachers, and especially those that you're going to mentor as you know as you move on in life. So it's very important for you to learn that you, you forget you don't forget about your roots and you remember everyone and you come back to help. So congratulations to the class of 2017. Okay? Um, we wish you success and happiness and hope you have a great summer and we wish you a great future. Thank you. It wouldn't be an event if we did not showcase our musical talent as they perform back home. This is the last performance for our graduating seniors. You have done an amazing job over the years, and thank you for your dedication to our music program. Mr. Stasiak?
this fall, fall and will be studying engineering and business. I have one other thing I've got to say about Nigel, which is a, a huge accomplishment. Nigel has perfect attendance. No, oh, no lateness, no absence for four years. graduation ceremony. Today we are gathered to celebrate the accomplishments and achievements of the finest students the city has to offer. Students who have worked to reach a high level of education and will use it to move forward into the next chapter of their lives. Before we begin, I'd like to say I'm sorry because I know most of you drove here and your car probably gets it. 
Uh, but yeah, I can tell you guys drove here because uh, the attendance is great. Not as good as mine, but. So, I'd like for everybody in the audience to know that you guys are responsible for us being here, though. It is the little things that you guys have done for us that have made us a family of Red Wings and molded us into graduates. Although on a day like this, we all look happy and giddy, a lot of work is required to be here. For the graduates, we all know what it took to study late at night and try and come in the next day and be at our best. We know what it took after like a long day to try and go home and still be ourselves. Even everyday life takes a toll on you. Mom, I'm absolutely, I absolutely hate it when you used to come in the room in the morning to wake me up. But you got me here. And I'd like to thank everybody who's done the same for the rest of the students here. I'd like to thank the teachers for the extra hours you gave us when we were struggling. The lessons you have taught us will impact us forever. As Ms. Pick said, it takes a village to raise a child, and together all of you join forces and raise a class of graduates, and you should be proud of yourselves. We don't have a very big graduated class, but our experiences together have been amazing. Many of us have been to school with each other since we were in kindergarten. My best friend over there, the valedictorian, has been by my side since first grade. We've, we've competed with each other year in and year out, and still managed to walk home with each other at the end of the day. I traveled to Europe with him and saw an entirely new side of the world. I've been with him here as he's had surgery after surgery, and through it all our friendship stayed as strong as he has. It's quite an amazing story to hear, and it's just one of many. I tell you about all the lunchroom table stories, but Miss Kelly will have a fit probably. Uh, the greatest part about those stories, though, is that they don't involve every single kid that I've been with since kindergarten. As I said, we've grown into a family, and just this year alone, I've met kids that I wish I would have knew a lot longer. Mr. Wanko uh, said about our class like last week, that as much as we talk about each other and as much as we argue, you still never see a group of kids that get along so well. And it speaks volumes to us because while there are bumps in the road along the way, it wouldn't be high school without conflict here and there. Yet we made it through and we did it with flying colors. When we came into eighth grade, I remember some people had told us we were one of the worst incoming classes. I don't know if it was just uh, actual opinions or if it was just a motivation tactic, but the resilience of this class has overpowered those words and we made a name for ourselves. The other night, Mr. England really inspired me when he talked about the name that such a small school like Hoboken High had made for itself over the last few years. For years, we've been viewed as underdogs, but as of today, this is no longer the case. You're only an underdog until you make your presence felt, and the graduates here have done just that. Jared and Alatea Henriquez, who gave up countless hours to help lead the softball team to a state championship, as well as leading the soccer and basketball teams toward the top, did an amazing job. Because of you, we are underdogs no longer. I'd also like to recognize Zion Rodriguez, Logan Germain, and Justin Davis. Last year, I played basketball with you guys, and I knew it was something special. You guys led the basketball team to the brink of glory the last two years. Justin, you broke the record for scoring in school. Because of you, we are underdogs no longer. And for the football team, I remember after eighth grade, we had just won a title, and everybody was saying, with all the seniors who were leaving, we weren't going to win again. Next year, you guys came back and won a back-to-back -back title. Two years later, you went and got another. Because of you, we are underdogs no longer. And let it be known that the story of our graduating class is not simply told by our stellar job in athletics, but by our ability to perform academically. Freshman year, I remember we were told we were immature. Well, today we got to show just how mature we've grown. Vincent's going to walk out of here today, a proud valedictorian with a 4.6 GPA and a full academic scholarship for the next four years. <laughs> Along with Kobe Jones, I'm going to hope you have an institute of technology at Stevens. Cherish Frazier, Akela Milo, and Zion Reeves form a trio of students who will be attending Lincoln University this fall, a historically black college. Taylor <laughs> for me will be pursuing her dream of law and politics at George Washington University next year. Because of you, as well as all the other successes I don't have time to mention, we are underdogs no longer, and why we as a class have been able to earn over $9 million in scholarship awards. Hats off to you all. Now I say this as humbly as I possibly can, but I can't be more proud of myself. I'm going to be joining Vincent and Kobe on a full academic scholarship as well as Stevens. 
Um, I'm proud to be a lot of I was supposed to be another delinquent kid from the projects. I remember I was taken to a mall security once after arguing with the store manager about four workers. And the officer there didn't give me a single ounce of respect. He told me just to go home that nobody wanted to deal with a little project kid talking nonsense. I never added in this detail when I told people the story, but those words shaped me. When times got tough and I had to help my mother who was struggling to walk and move around the house, I heard those words. When times got tough and I was working to have some money for myself and make things easier on the house, I heard those words. When my grandmother fractured her leg last summer and I had to put stop in order to take care of her even learning how to cook for her, I heard those words. Many times I was ready to fold and give them to exhaustion. I used to laugh at my friends when they used to make jokes about me always having to do some chore or an errand. But I can't say these jokes didn't creep into my thoughts constantly. But I know that everybody faces their challenges. So as I came to the building every day, I told myself as long as everybody else pushed through, so would I. Except for the day at the prom. That, that was another story. <laughs> but life was short, so it's important to make it worth something. That's why I needed to say everybody needs to say so often. Now here we are at the end of an unforgettable journey. I've already taken up plenty of time, so without further ado, I shall conclude my speech giving my best wishes to the class of 2017. Take all the memories you've made here and all the things you have learned and propel yourselves into the future. You have the power, the intelligence, and the determination to pave new paths and change the world for the better. Somebody has to do it, and there's no reason it shouldn't be you. With all the adversities we have faced as a class and the results which have come from it, there's no doubt in my mind that the class of 2017 will be remembered as one of the greatest graduating classes to walk through these hallways. It is our job to bring pride to the people who sit in front of us and to make something of ourselves. Once more, I congratulate you all on the achievements we have come to reach together. Way to go, right wings. Thank you. I don't think that's the last speech we're going to hear from him. Excellent, beautiful job. And when you talk about character, when someone gets up here to accept their award, and all they do is recognize the people that stand before them, that's a brilliant, brilliant human being. Thank you. Thank you very much. Valedictorian who for four years maintains the highest GPA with a 4.6. I welcome to the stage, Mr. Vicente Morales. <laughs> Vicente will be attending Stevens Institute of Technology this fall, studying biomedical engineering. Of 2017, I would like to thank all the faculty, friends, and family members for being here. You have all played a large role in getting us to where we are now, standing here on the stage in front of you. Almost exactly four years ago, I remember leaving the eighth grade and embarking on a new adventure, that of high school. I know for many of us, we were apprehensive, just like probably many of our parents are right now. Because, you know, high school can really be intimidating, but it can also be a place for growth. As Drake would say, we started from the bottom, and it looks like the whole team is here. <laughs> we, of course, are not the same students that we were back then. Just think about how far we have come, individually and as a class. Looking back to freshman year, it seems like it was just yesterday. It was the first football game, the first class, and the first boyfriend and girlfriend. The second boyfriend and girlfriend. The third boyfriend and girlfriend. But figure out, figuring out that you were also the problem. Also, think about the music and fashion trends we lived through, and all the different dance moves that were created. You had the Dougie. You had the Whip. 
I won't do the running man. I'm not going to embarrass myself. <laughs> but we have simply come a long way. I know for one reason I am not the same student. I was really timid and quiet. Something like this rushing here, I wouldn't be able to do. I would literally just sit there in class, do my work, and get my grades. But I've gone through a lot going through all these surgeries that I've learned that I have to use my voice. I just can't be that quiet kid anymore. Now, I know we get sometimes a bad reputation as a school, but I don't believe that. I think we're the greatest school. We, do, we as students do not ostracize our imperfections. Instead, we are friendly, we are accepting of each other, and we are always trying to help each other in any way possible. Uh, so now let me tell you about our graduating class. If you ever see a talent show on TV, you might sometimes see one of the judges say to a contestant, you're going to be a star because you have a lot of potential. Well, that's what I see when I stand up here. The class of 2017 is undoubtedly one of the most successful classes in the school's history. For instance, this graduating class has already amassed over $9 million in scholarship. It means that colleges are willing to invest in us because they see we're capable of positively affecting their campuses. And, most importantly, this world. Then there are our athletic programs that year after year face adversity, yet found success across all levels of competition, bringing home state titles and making deep runs into the playoffs. To our various student organizations and clubs, such as the Disney Club, the National Honor Society, Math Club, Harvard Model Congress, and many more, they do out they outdid themselves this year and every year and proudly represented our school, winning countless of awards that I could not even fit in this speech. These accomplishments are a testament to the hard work we have all put in as students, parents, and faculty. Now, as much as we would like to reminisce about old times, after today we begin a new adventure, one that is full of unknowns. But life is like that. As we get older, there will always be new experiences or challenges that might seem simply overwhelming. And it is how we respond that will determine our destiny. I have no doubt that we are capable of combating the unknown successfully, especially after being in the Red Wing these four years of high school. But that's not to say we won't fail, because everyone makes mistakes. And things don't always go as planned, but as Red Wings, we never give up. Street poet and philosopher Drake once said, Oh well, I guess we lose some and win some, as long as the outcome is equal. You know I want it all in Denson. Now, while the idea of material success does influence our lives, I ask that you follow your dreams and do what makes you happy. Stay true to yourself and follow your passions. Be the best version of yourself and fly through the turbulence in life because you are a wrangling. Go out there and make a change because, my fellow graduates, you will be successful at whatever you put your mind to. Most importantly, remember that life is short, so be phenomenal and not forgotten. Congratulations, once again, class of 2017. Our class president, Kayla Fermain, also would like to step ahead and she step up to the podium. She has a couple of words for her fellow graduates. In recognition to the age of Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter, I'll keep my speech caption size. Reflecting back on our past four years, I, can't, I cannot ever come to understand why movies portray high school the way they do. The boy doesn't always get the girl. Clicks don't really exist. Not all teachers are out to get you. And every two seconds, while we would absolutely love it, the whole school does not break out into synchronized dance and song. 
But in respect to John Hughes and those other forgettable directors, we do leave with the lesson that is initially taught. Most of us being born and raised in Hoboken have never really experienced life outside the square mile. Our families were raised there and here and our, their families before them. Yet yeah, no one has taken the initiative to venture out. My people, you are unique. You have gained passage to explore. And the lesson here is that there is a huge world outside of Hoboken. And while we are big fish in a small pond, our individual hardships and experiences we've learned throughout Hoboken High School have given us the strength and willpower to evolve, evolve into sharks in the ocean. As class president, I will leave you with some, something I hope you will forever resonate, sorry, I hope will forever resonate within you. Choose your battles wisely. Not everything is meant to be a war, but for those battles you pick to fight, revolutionize their meaning. For after this point, you are on your own and now have the responsibility of creating your own purpose. Now you guys are about to receive your diploma and you're evolving from a bird to a rugby. Congratulations, class of course. Thanks, Kayla. So before we move on to the big event, I would like to introduce our superintendent of schools, Dr. Johnson, to address the class of 2017 and certify the diplomas. Dr. Johnson. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I would like to take a moment to congratulate the class of 2017 and to share a few words before I certify, certify the diplomas. Graduating from high school is a monumental accomplishment as your years in the district inevitably included challenges and rewards. As a collective class, you have had successes and many of them to be proud of. These include athletic championships, academic accolades, musical and theater arts awards, certificates for written publications, and many more. Most impressively, as a few have already mentioned, uh, this class you've been offered over $9.2 million in college and university scholarships for academics, leadership, and athletics, and an additional $42,000 in local and community uh, scholarships that were awarded at the award ceremony last week. This is more than double last year's total and six times the amount from four years ago. While some of you are very clear about your future plans, others might not have yet selected the path that you will take. However, each of you has opportunities in hand, and I do hope that you courageously take advantage of what is available to you. I am proud to announce that 91% of you sitting in front of me have been accepted to two or four year colleges and universities, 5% to technical schools and technical colleges, and 4% to prep schools or military service. Graduation sometimes brings about anxiety. It's the unknown associated with new people uh, that will come into your lives, new places that you will go, and also new daily routines. But graduation also brings about excitement sparked by the new opportunities that lie ahead. I prefer not to give advice at graduation ceremonies, but tonight I simply would like to leave you with a compilation of words and abridged quotes from Kelly James Scott. We have to be vigilant in protecting our opportunities to succeed to laugh, to be enhanced, and to live. Life does not owe us anything. In fact, we owe something to the world. Now is the time for you to shine, the time when your dreams are within reach and possibilities are vast. Now is the time for you to become the people that you have dreamed of becoming. This is your world, you are here, and you matter. Class of 2017, the world is waiting for you. At this time, I am honored as superintendent of the Hoboken Public School District to certify to President Thomas Klufeldt, Vice President Sharon Angley, and members of the Hoboken Board of Education that all students assembled here tonight for this very special and momentous graduation ceremony have in fact completed all of the requirements in accordance with the New Jersey Administrative Code and the Hoboken Public School District's graduation policies. By doing so, these fine young men and women are entitled to receive their diplomas and all rights and privileges therein. Principal Pika Pietra, you are now permitted to issue the diplomas to the class of 2017.
Miss Donnelly and Miss Ruskowski, Miss Wiener, please step up. Um, before we, wait, sorry, before we start, I just want to say something very quickly. I've been with you guys for four years, and three very special girls in this class gave me the most beautiful gift the other day, and it was a bracelet with a compass on it, and they don't understand how meaningful that is to me at this point in my life, and I think it's also very important at the time of your life that you're in, and I just want to tell you the meaning behind the bracelet, and I want you to listen to it, take it for what it is and use it in the next chapter of your life. A compass is an instrumental aid. It provides guidance and navigation through life's unexpected twists and turns. Each cardinal direction has a significant meaning. North represents home and wisdom. South embodies passion and creation. East signifies new beginnings and inspiration. And West symbolizes introspection and reflection. So I encourage you all to do life. And any course you follow, Taking this into account will be fruitful. So now, for your diplomas. <laughs> China Rose Acevedo. Christian Amato. Brian Anaya. Davina Arias. Ashley Marie Ortega. Jaylene Avalos. Kayla Bailey, Alexander Bonilla, Robert Booker, Jacob Elias Barrero, Keith Boyd,
Avery Seth Del Valle. Evans Jonas Desrevier Jr. Brian Diaz. Denija Diaz. Jonathan Diaz. Nasir Drew. Tariq Ali Felton. Kayla Fermain. Cherish Frazier. Shayla Garcia. Wilden Germain. Andrea Gonzalez. Peter Justin Gutierrez. Alizea Enriquez. Jada Linda Enriquez. Luis Hernandez. Rajan Enrico Haran. Tanea. Johnson, Christopher Kelly, Jerea Lee, Edward Michael Labrie, Joanna Deanna Lorenzo. Antonar Mo 
war.
please.